What if you could start a society from scratch? Make your own city, write your own laws, and do it how you think it should be done. What if I told you this was happening as we speak? There's a startup city being created in Honduras right now in partnership with the local Honduran government. And by startup city, I mean it's literally being built from scratch on bare dirt by local Latin American entrepreneurs. The founders of the city want to create the next Hong Kong and become a financial and technology hub for the Latin American region. As crazy as it sounds, they eventually want hundreds of thousands or even millions of people living inside their city. The name of the city is Prospera and it has almost complete autonomy in political, economic, and legal matters. But it doesn't have autonomy over criminal matters. Income tax levels, business regulation, building codes, and civil disputes are all governed by Prosperan law. But it can't legalize heroin or physical assault, for example. Prospera is located on an island 40 miles off the coast of Honduras called Roatan. Prospera currently owns and controls about 600 acres on this island, but the island itself is massive. The island of Roatan has about 110,000 people on it, it's about 33 square miles, and a lot of that land is currently uninhabited. With the 600 acres of land that Prospera does own on the island, it's trying to incentivize and promote developers to build and create value for everyone. Prospera could sell its land outright to real estate developers or just sign long-term leases, and the result will probably be a mixture of both. I thought this idea was so wild that I needed to go down and see it for myself firsthand. When I went and visited it a few months ago, I flew from San Francisco to Houston and Houston directly into Roatan. In addition to Houston, you can also fly directly from Miami and Atlanta, and it's about a few hour flight. Roatan is historically a very popular snorkeling and scuba diving location, so there is an international airport already on the island. It's about a 20 minute drive from Prospera to the international airport. While I was down there, I learned that Prospera was informally founded in 2018 by a Venezuelan entrepreneur named Eric Bryman. There are about 40 to 50 people currently working for Prospera, helping to start this city. A key part of Prospera's goal and mission statement is to be the easiest jurisdiction in the world to do business in. They want to be the cheapest, smoothest, and simplest place in the world for anyone to start a business. You might be asking yourself, well, is there anything already there? When I drove up to their land for the first time, I saw that they had three buildings, a main office building and two model homes. I loved the main office building. I thought it was very gorgeous. In terms of infrastructure, it looked like they had built the basics. They had a septic system for sewage, generators for electricity, running water, gas, and Wi-Fi. There's only one person living inside Prospera right now, and it's actually a company employee who's living in one of the model homes. It's obviously not five-star living, but he's got a grocery store about 15 minutes down the road, but outside of Prospera's territory. Long-term, Prospera hopes that a company like Safeway would see a business opportunity to come and build a grocery store. However, before that happens, Safeway would need to believe that there's consumer demand for it. That's one of the tough chicken and egg problems that Prospera faces, is that Safeway won't want to build the grocery store before it knows there are customers there and citizens there, but citizens won't want to live in Prospera before Safeway builds the grocery store. That sort of chicken and egg problem is one of the many problems that Prospera faces to get a city off the ground. The start of this project originated with an economist named Paul Romer who popularized the idea of charter cities in a 2009 TED Talk. After hearing about Romer's ideas, a group of Honduran government officials approached him and offered to co-pilot a project with them to try it out. They saw Honduras was not developing as quickly as other countries, and they knew their people were just as smart. So they wanted to try something new and innovative to jumpstart the development process. So in 2013, they passed a series of laws that allowed for the creation of these sandbox territories called ZAs. ZA stands for Zone of Employment and Economic Development. In terms of tangible first steps, Prospera is pursuing multiple developments in parallel. One of those interesting initiatives is a hospital operator who's wanting to build and operate a hospital complex inside of Prospera. Many Americans go to Roatan for medical tourism, 
Yet there are very few American doctors there because Honduras does not recognize foreign medical degrees, even if you went to Harvard. So the hospital operator wants to build and operate inside of Prospera because it can recruit American doctors who don't need to go through additional recertification in order to practice. Prospera will recognize American medical degrees, for example. In summation, this project will take decades before it reaches their goal. And hopefully it exists beyond our lifetimes. Whether you love or hate this idea, it will be many, many years and decades until we know the true impact of this project. If you have any thoughts, positive, negative, or neutral, I'd love to hear them down below in the comments. I also included a number of links down below in the description box if you wanted to read and learn more. Thank you for watching.